All right, so <clears throat> it's my understanding that we want to talk about using uh, tree net in random forest mode uh, uh, for the first part, and then uh, at some point we will switch and cover topics related to using lagged variables in tree net as well as other products because it's the general functionality, right? Okay, cool. So what I will do then, I will, <clears throat> uh, I'll do a little bit of talk in the beginning uh, when we talk about random forest in tree net, and then we'll do the same thing for the lags, okay? <clears throat> All right, uh, what you see on the screen here is uh, the SBM 70, uh, which is uh, essentially the product that was released uh, this year. And uh, as part of the enhancements that we've added inside of the 70, was the ability to run TreeNet in a very special mode, which is essentially emulating uh, a random forest technology. Uh, so what I'm going to illustrate here is how one could run TreeNet uh, in essentially building a random forest model underneath. Uh, I picked a data set uh, for the sake of this session uh, that relates to the sales of oranges in 10 different stores in Brazil over a number of uh, years at some point in the past. Uh, so what I will do here first, uh, when I run SPM, so I'm going to open the data set, just the usual way, and I have it in the little extract here called oranges2.csv. Uh, so it's a CSV file uh, that has uh, about 3,947 records, 11 variables, uh, 3 character variables, and 8 numeric. Now, the data set itself, let's say if I click on the view data, is organized in a straightforward classical form. So you have a sales date, you have a store ID, and there are overall uh, 10 different stores. Then it shows for each specific day, uh, on date, it shows uh, what is the volume of sales, and obviously that leads to revenue and some other things. Uh, then you also have an indicator whether there was any promotion on that specific day, and followed by month, uh, 1, to 3, 4 through 12, then we have uh, uh, up to two years in this data set. Uh, then we also have a weekday, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. Uh, you also have a sales price that was posted on that specific, basically on oranges on that day in the store. And of course, usually when you have a promotion, that means that the price went down, like from 0.96 to 0.88. Uh, then you have a state. In this case, it's just one of the Brazilian regions. You have a climate whether it's uh, there are different types of climate the climate and we also introduced a variable uh, specifically test 50t uh, that has a characteristic such that all records prior to a certain point in time are part of the learn sample and once you go uh, at some point into the uh, future for the specific store then you will see that the test indicator turns to one. Well, it's not easy to see, but at some point it turns to one right here. So it's a very simple data set for illustration purposes. Now notice, and it will become more important in the future, that the data set itself uh, has uh, what we call a time series structure to it. So all the records are ordered along the timeline. Uh, for now, I'll just want to model this data set uh, and see whether I can predict sales based on the remaining available predictors. Okay, so I'm going here to the model setup, sort variables in file order. Uh, my sales is my target variable, and because it's a continuous variable, it will be a regression. Uh, and the modeling engine will be tree net, even though very soon we will start building random forest models. Now, as far as the predictors go, well, we are interested in 
gauging the effect of promotion on our sales. Uh, and we may suspect that the month might be relevant. Weekday might be relevant because people have different shopping patterns, uh, different seasons, and different times of week. Uh, price is likely to be important based on the general uh, econometric theory, uh, demand and supply, and things like that as well as state and climate. So those are six predictors that we're planning to use. And because we want to make sure that uh, uh, our, I mean, th th we build a model that does not cross contaminate on the time scale, we will use a specifically created test 50 variable that randomly that basically divides our data set into learn and test pieces such that the learn sample comes at an earlier point of time than the test sample and this is done by each store okay that's it the next part is a traditional modeling setup so in three not i'll run just for starters 206 node trees least squares model uh, using learn rate of 0.1. Now, I'm going to build a single tree net model such that we have a point of reference and later on, once we start building our F models, we can see that things indeed changed quite a bit. So I'm going to hit start. It proceeds by doing the data prep and uh, uh, fairly quickly comes back with this model here. And uh, the, the few things to notice is that the R squared is uh, 0.537. That's based on the test performance. And then we have this uh, optimal model here. And when I look at the summaries, the usual check is variable importance. See how price, state, month, weekday, promotion. Those are the five variables that were identified as uh, important predictors. Now, notice that promotion at the very bottom, which is often what happens. You can't really change shopping patterns of people, even when you run some powerful promotions. Okay, in any case, at this point, uh, I could go ahead and study this tree net model and perhaps modify it and do some other things. Uh, but the purpose of this talk is to illustrate random forest. Uh, so my next sequence of steps will change tree net behavior such that I can trick it into building a random forest model. Again, I go back to model setup, and as you'll see, it's, it really is quite simple. Uh, first thing I need to do is switch from least squares loss on the regression loss criterion to random forest loss. Uh, at this point, the random forest part of tree net assumes a continuous response variable. So if you have a binary response, you can still model it, but you would have to kind of treat it as a continuous variable that happens to have a 0, 1 values. So I switch to random forest here. Uh, now, the next important component will be to increase the number of nodes per tree. See, the default tree net models use six nodes. In random forest models, I want to increase that number to the largest number possible or something large but reasonable. Like in my case, I will increase this to 1,000. Now, it doesn't mean that every tree will be developed to 1,000 nodes because it may always stop earlier when it runs out of records or splits or any other condition, but I want to make sure that that number is large enough. And the number two, depending on how you model, by default, TreeNet forces at least 10 records in each terminal node. Now, that restriction is no longer required in order to build a successful RF model, and I can easily reduce it down to the extreme which is having only one record per terminal node. So again, to summarize, I switched to random forest, I increased max number of nodes per tree, and I also reduced individual node size. And the final step 
and that's where it gets a little, you, you, you may forget about it, uh, random forest, in addition to building very large bootstrapped trees, also introduces a concept of sampling at the node level. And uh, under TN Advanced, we have yet another control here under tree net parameters. It's called RF style predictor uh, selection. So if I put a check mark here and change the number zero, meaning that all variables are always tried, but in my case, I'll reduce that number of variables to three. In other words, at each node, now I will only be randomly processing three randomly selected variables out of the uh, initial available set of six or something like that. And typically, the recommendation here would be the square root of the number of variables, but you can also play around with the different settings. Okay, so I set the random forest, I increased the tree size, uh, I introduced the node size, and I also activated sampling of projectors here. That's all you need to do. I click start. It looks and feels as if TreeNet is running, but in reality, what it's really building is a random forest model underneath. Now, what the results are, first of all, notice R squared in this example went up. So we had uh, 0.537, now it's 0.564. Also notice previously we were building six node trees. Now we're building 665 node trees on average. Uh, and that's because I allowed up to 1,000 node trees, so there was no restriction on tree size, and it simply stopped building those trees uh, when it, it couldn't make them larger. And as far as the summary goes, everything else is, looks uh, in a familiar way, like variable importance highlights all six variables, uh, and we can gradually look at the plots and see what uh, the actual contribution of all of those variables. So let's say the top variable is price. So when I look at price, the plot here shows that there is a significant increase in the volume of sales when price is below uh, 1.0. Uh, and by the way, the price here is in relative terms. I mean, 1.0, some kind of uh, uh, standard price and then, uh, or average price, and then you go down to those uh, essentially discount levels or uh, added value or increased price. It's just sometimes they do that, you know, in different regions. But if you look at the price, clearly you have uh, increased volume as soon as you start hitting discounts of 30 or more percent. Uh, and if you look at the vertical scale, it's huge. I mean, we're talking about like 1,000 uh, units increase in daily amount of sales. Keep in mind that this is a random forest model, meaning the dependency curves here are obtained by analyzing a random forest model, and this is what kind of makes this run very powerful on both the prediction side, meaning higher R squared, and interpretation side, meaning that we are getting something useful and not just a random forest black box. And just quickly, if you're curious what the impact of other variables will be, uh, what you will see is that the month, for instance, decomposes all individual months into uh, impact either positive or negative. Uh, for example, January has associated with the greatest positive contribution to the sales of oranges. But if you look at the vertical scale, unlike price in thousands, here it's only, uh, we're talking about tens and the most 100 uh, impact. Uh, July is the, the lowest contribution towards sales. And in a similar way, if you look at uh, promotion, Clearly, we have uh, the fact that there is a promotion running this month. Promotion could either mean that there is some kind of uh, 
I don't know, discount applied, or there was an ad running on TV, or any coupon in uh, some kind of local newspaper. In any case, the fact that there was a promotion is associated with roughly 80 units increase in the amount of sales compared to a non-promotion days. Uh, likewise, climate shows you regions that have the largest sales of oranges, and in this case, on the vertical scale, we're talking about hundreds plus. Uh, state has a very profound impact. Well, apparently, in uh, Rio de Janeiro state, they have the largest sales of oranges, so that kind of accounts for the state effect. And the weekday also shows some interesting, unusual patterns. For instance, Thursday happens to be the most contributing day to the sale of this product. Well, in any case, uh, this might be interesting to study uh, and uh, to build further models, but the primary goal of this discussion was to illustrate quickly how one can easily build an RF model using Net machinery. Now, it may not look like an RF model in the first glance. It may look like this is just some other version of 3Net. But as a programmer who developed all of the internal machinery, I can guarantee you that it is an RF model. Why? Because as it builds all of those trees internally, it breaks the connection on the residuals, and each tree in this sequence uses the original target. And the end result is always obtained by averaging all of those individual predictions. 